copper treatment for saltwater aquarium fish. Some believe that copper can be used to eliminate a wide range of diseases, when in fact it can only eliminate three marine parasites, ick, velvet, and a lesser known parasite called trichodina. So if you're trying to run a fish through a full prophylactic quarantine, what other medications can be used? Seachem Metroplex can be combined with copper to also treat for brook, also known as clownfish disease, and Metro may have some efficacy against uranema, which are the red sores often seen on chromis damsels. Prozipro or API General Cure are common dewormers used to eliminate flukes and black ick. These dewormers are best applied before or after copper treatment, but can be combined with copper in an emergency situation. So how long do you treat with copper? Well, the first thing to know is that the copper clock does not begin until the copper level reaches therapeutic, and we will discuss more about this in just a few minutes. Standard treatment is 30 days. However, a fish may be transferred to a non-medicated observation tank after just 14 days, provided nothing but the fish gets transferred over. You can't use anything from the original quarantine tank to set up this observation tank. So I want to talk a little bit about things to do and things to avoid when using copper. In the quarantine tank, I would avoid using rock, which absorbs copper. I'm not saying it can't be done. I'm saying that you will have a very difficult time trying to maintain a stable copper level. A light layer of sand on the bottom is fine, especially if quarantining a fish that needs sand. When doing water changes, the copper level of any replacement water should match the quarantine tank. This does not include top-off water since copper does not evaporate. It is especially important to keep the copper level stable once it reaches therapeutic because you will need to restart the copper clock if it dips below therapeutic. If possible, raise copper on fish slowly and gradually over a period of several days. And what I mean by gradually is dose small increments several times per day. For example, if your goal is to dose five milliliters worth of copper per day, instead dose one milliliter five times per day. However, when dealing with an emergency situation where a fish is showing active signs of ichor velvet, you really have no other choice but to raise the copper level to therapeutic within 24 hours. Do not overdose copper. Copper is a poison, pure and simple. It only works because most fish can tolerate being in it longer than the parasites. If a fish is showing signs of copper intolerance by not eating, acting lethargic, or breathing heavily, you should lower the copper level until the fish resumes eating and is acting normally again. You can then try to slowly raise the copper level again. However, if a fish shows signs of copper intolerance a second time, an alternative treatment should be used instead. So this is a picture of a typical saltwater quarantine tank. You'll see we have a heater, thermometer, a wave maker, and a PVC elbow for the fish to hide. You can use multiple PVC elbows if quarantining multiple fish. Hanging off the back is a Seachem Tidal power filter. AquaClear or BioWheel are other suitable quarantine hang-on back filters. It is advisable to use a hang-on back filter like this in quarantine for biological filtration. It takes the place of rock and sand that you would normally rely upon to break down ammonia in your display tank, but what biomedia can be used inside these filters that will not absorb copper? We've tested both Seachem Matrix and Fluval Biomax, and we are happy to report that neither biomedia will absorb copper. Speaking of ammonia, it is probably the number one killer of fish in quarantine, However, most liquid ammonia test kits will not accurately measure ammonia in copper water. Most provide false positives. If you look to your left, the solution is to use a Seachem ammonia alert badge, which still works in the presence of copper. The round disc of the alert badge should remain yellow at all times to ensure that your quarantine tank is safe from ammonia. Now, I spoke earlier about ensuring that your copper level reaches and stays at a therapeutic level for a duration of either 14 or 30 days. 
This is the copper clock I mentioned previously. If your copper level is below therapeutic, not all of the parasites will be eliminated. Some will survive and continue to reinfect the fish. However, if the copper level goes above therapeutic, then you risk harming or even killing your fish. So maintaining a proper therapeutic level when using copper is very important. The numbers listed here don't have to be exactly maintained, but you should stay close, say within 0.05 ppm. I also want to reiterate the importance of slowly and gradually raising the copper level up to therapeutic. However, all bets are off when treating fish showing active signs of ick or velvet, whether it be a newly arrived fish that you are quarantining or dealing with an emergency situation in your display tank and you are trying to catch all of the fish for treatment. In these emergency situations, the risk of delaying treatment outweighs the risk of raising copper too quickly. So I advise raising the copper level up to therapeutic as soon as possible. So starting at the top, cupramine has a therapeutic level of 0.5 parts per million. Copper safe is 2.0 parts per million. Copper power is the product I personally use, and as you can see, it actually has a therapeutic range of 2.0 to 2.5 ppm. It is better to treat at 2.5 ppm, but 2.0 can be used instead if the fish is showing signs of copper intolerance. The difference is I advise a longer observation period post copper treatment when using 2.0 to ensure that the treatment has been successful. In fact, you should always observe for two to four weeks after completing any treatment because nothing is 100% foolproof. Copper failures are rare, but they do happen. I will also post in the comments section a do-it-yourself copper recipe for those in need of such. The recipe only requires two ingredients that are easily sourced on Amazon. There are several copper test kits on the market, but the one I trust the most is the Hanna Copper Checker shown here. As you can see, it displays a PPM number instead of trying to guess at a color. Given the importance of treating at an exact copper level, I feel this is a worthwhile investment. It is $50 for the Copper Checker, but I also recommend buying extra reagents because I believe the Copper Checker itself only comes with four. I recommend testing your copper level daily to ensure that it is remaining stable and is not fluctuating. Again, remember if the copper level dips below therapeutic at any time, then the copper clock must restart. Back to day one. Shown here is a list of copper intolerant and sensitive species. Copper should not be used on intolerant species and should be used with caution on copper sensitive species. Again, the key is to raise copper slowly and gradually when treating copper sensitive species. And if twice a fish shows signs of copper intolerance after raising it to therapeutic, use a different treatment method or protocol. Final thoughts. Copper is a liquid poison. It only works because most fish, not all, can tolerate being in it longer than the parasites. Copper only kills the free swimming stage of ick and velvet, which prevents reinfection. Copper does not provide any immediate relief for parasites. Copper does not evaporate, is not susceptible to decomposition, and will remain stable in water for several months, providing nothing like rock is absorbing it. Cupasorb and using a polyfilter are the most efficient ways to remove copper from the water. Carbon actually is a very inefficient way to remove copper. Post-treatment observation for two to four weeks is very important to ensure treatment was successful. As mentioned previously, copper failures are very rare, but they do happen. And finally, black mollies can be used during the observation period to assist with disease detection. Thank you for watching this video. See links in the comments section for more detailed information and join us on my forum for all reef aquarium related discussion.